I'm a Muslim, I came from the streets to Islam They get old now when you see your brother give a palm Embrace with a hug and greet me with salam Salam alaikum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, Big hello to the brothers and sisters who are watching We've got another exciting video for you today We're going to talk to brother Hamza Zortis Who is a, mashallah, beautiful and inspiring speaker Who's going to tell us a few things about our own religion To boost Iman so that we try and be better people And also the people inter interested in Islam to Watch this and, you know, just be a bit more enlightened About what Islam actually is And hear the truth from Muslims themselves Tell us what does being Muslim imply? What is you know, what is being Muslim? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah my bad. Sound like a broad zakhla here for this. I think fundamentally in a 21st century context what it means to be a Muslim is someone who really truly thinks about their position in life. Because everyone has spiritual windows in life. It could be a death in the family, it could be a bad period in your life, it could be an accident, etc. etc. And within these windows, whether you call them spiritual or not, they just wake up calls to make us reevaluate re our position. Because generally, we could be just like heedless. As uh, the Quran mentions, Rafla, we're just in a state of heedlessness. So we're just like wandering around, grazing the land like cows, just eating from the grass. Whereas what the Quran does and what a Muslim should do, or any human being should do, is always take a step back sometimes and reevaluate. What does it mean to be me? So the Quran says, Do they not reflect within themselves? So when we reflect on ourselves, what does it mean to be me? And I need answers to that because it's about me. It's about something very important in my life, something that drives me. Me is me, right? And it makes me do the things that I do. So this is why it's very important for us to ask that question. When we do that, the Quran also mentions well, there's different realities we can think about. There's an atheist worldview, there's a humanist worldview, there's a religious worldview, there's an Islamic worldview, all these worldviews. Which one do we adopt now? And the Quran says something very fundamental, and I'm just paraphrasing. Are you going to follow just your forefathers? Think about what you're believing in, think about what you're doing, think about your perspective on it. So when we go to all these different types of realities, we say, well, how do you want the truth? We go to the foundations. And the foundations for a Muslim is Tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we affirm and actualize His oneness. We affirm that He's one and we actualize it in worship and seeking help. And we know this to be true because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists in a very beautiful way as the Quran says, do you think the universe came from nothing? Obviously not, it came from something. Also we know the Quran to be from Allah because Allah even challenges the whole of humanity with regards to the divine origin of the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأَتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you're in doubt about this book, which we have sent down to our servant, referring to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to bring one chapter like it. Who are your witnesses and supporters and helpers besides Allah, if you're truthful. And we know no one has been able to challenge the Quran. So we have good reasons to believe. So it shapes our worldview. It shapes who we are. So that, that, that's what it means in a way to be a Muslim in the 21st century. Okay, the but the one final point I think, yeah. what it also means is if we do reflect on our position about what it means to be me, then we will assess that our reference point now should be Allah and the deen. And it shouldn't be all the other, the other all these other pressures, like social pressure, that direct us to another path. And that's very important to realize. So when we do have that perspective, we'll be able to basically understand where we should be going in life, inshallah. So with regards to being the best of that, being the best Muslim, um, could you give us some words to uh, enlighten us on how to be better? You know, like what, what is one of the main things that we can do to try and improve ourselves? My name is Hamza, right? Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows Hamza better than Hamza does. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we have to appreciate. So whatever Allah has given us, it's always going to be good for us and, and better for us. Yeah. So how does Allah address the human being in order to become a better human being? The first point is we need to really deal with our ego and arrogance. That's the thing that stops us from worshipping Allah. It stops us from taking the Quran and Sunnah and adopting it and it becoming our own. And what does the Quran say? It says two things. Remember where you came from. You were a baby. You couldn't even wipe your own backside, man. You couldn't keep your neck up. You couldn't feed yourself. Go a bit more further. You were despised fluid. And also the Quran tells us remember, remember or reflect upon 
you end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin da ibat al maut. Every soul is going to taste death. We're going to become worm buffet. The worms are going to eat us up. And we're arrogant and we think we could challenge God, we could challenge the Quran. We know it's true, so therefore I would break down our arrogance and ego and connect with Allah. Also, remember this two things for the youth, which we forget about. We always brought up with this type of God as almost some kind of absentee landlord. You don't pay the bills, you're going to get burnt. That's not the reality of our tradition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although He's severe in punishment, but He is the most merciful and He's the loving, Al Wudud, which means excessively, excessively loving in Islam. Also, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, Allah is the one that forgives. And Allah tells us, don't fall into the trap of shaitan that you've done a bad deed and you want to go Juma Salah and you want to pray your, you want to pray the horror, you want to do your prayer or, or read Quran, but you got the back of your mind, ah, oh, this is really bad thing last week. That is, that is from shaitan, it's not from the deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always wants you back. Even to the point Allah tells us, He didn't create you to be perfect. He didn't create you to be a perfect human being. He created you for you to acknowledge your weakness and your sins and to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the point. It's a constant, constant tawbah and remembrance of understanding that Allah is the forgiving will be able to enable us to free ourselves from these burdens of our sins in essence and we have to realize because we were brought up thinking that we have to be perfect everyone sins the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said everyone sins essentially and the best of all sinners are those who repent so don't even if you have killed 99 men Allah still wants to forgive you you just need to your heart needs to incline towards it and that's a profound point let your heart incline towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah say in the hadith Qudsi? Allah will come running to you. Inshallah. Okay, so alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for those inspiring and beautiful words. Inshallah, brothers and sisters, um, take that uh, and benefit from it and um, improve yourselves every day. Get rid of the arrogance. Seek the, uh, seek the guidance of your Creator. And um, inshallah, we'll get better. And also the non-Muslim brothers and sisters in humanity, do your best to learn more about the beautiful way of life that is Islam from true Muslims, from good people who are representing the creator of all things. Asalaamu As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. If you ask me, why do I stand here so unafraid of everything around me? Proudly I would say, I am a Muslim.